My name is Sam Evan Jones. And I'm the film editor on Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. You know, I started off in England and the only full-time kind of job I could get was with an animation company. And I thought, well, maybe if I stick around at this long enough, I'll get to go to the States. And maybe if I stick around at that long enough, I'll get to work on a big live action film with lots of special effects. I thought that was all going to happen within about, you know, 36 months. And it's taken, you know, 12 years or something. But, you know, we're getting there. Well, there was a way of working that Andrew and I had developed that was creating the script using storyboards as well as, as conventional script writing tools. So we would start off with script pages. These are storyboarded by storyboard artists and Andrew takes a look at those. They're refined by the storyboard artists. They're sent to editorial where we cut them together as animatics, which are kind of like animated storyboards with temporary dialogue and temporary sound effects and temporary music. We use our own voices for the characters. I did a pretty mean Mr. Tumnus. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tumnus. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Tumnus. Uh, I think my greatest fear on this film was um, day one of shooting. Hey, Mark. It had taken us a year and a lot of work to get to that point, and I knew from that point we had at least 18 months of uh, intense, intense work. To go, and I, I just felt like such a huge mountain to climb. But um, I think probably the greatest day of, of the whole shoot was like day two of shooting, when we actually had footage and we could start cutting. To enjoy working with a director, there has to be a lot of trust. He's shooting all the stuff and he's leaving you alone with it for long periods. <laughs> he has to look good when he comes back. <laughs> the stamina factor that, that we were shooting for um, 130 odd days, which I think is quite exceptional. We in New Zealand for nine months, then back in Los Angeles for, you know, four weeks, then we're off to the Czech Republic for four weeks, you know, five days in London doing voiceover stuff, back to LA for four weeks, then to New Zealand. We were just constantly moving. Cut. All right, so you've got two million feet of film, you sit down. With that quantity of footage, there really is only one thing that you're looking for the whole time, which is performance. The basic thing to do with any scene was always to put the best performance together first, using these key moments, try and tell the story within the scene. He's the bite! Cutting with real characters and virtual characters from the same scene does have its challenges. I'm mentioning fortunate because I'd come from a world where you didn't have any characters. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd worked on the Shrek films with Andrew where um, all the characters are in Andrew's mind until they're finished being animated. So, so it's actually, in some ways, it was a, it was a huge leap forward to have um, the four kids' performances around which we could build the, the performances of the, the CG characters. As each scene is shot, we would rough cut that. And we had a, a great um, help in the fact that we'd previous stuff, so we were able to rough cut with very crude representations of what we wanted the visual effects to be. We, we came back to Los Angeles and we had pretty much a rough cut of everything that was shot. I think editorial, it's been quite inspiring how we've managed to keep quite a lot of the lyricism and the, and the poetry of what, what Don and Andrew shot and yet keep the thing moving along. I mean, there's always a tension between trying to create magic and wonder and yet keep what's basically a road movie moving. <laughs> and I think, I think the final product, we've managed to do that. What do you think you're doing? Peter, quickly, the shelter, now! Come on! Oh, wait, come on! I recently found all these photographs of my father because I never knew my father. And, and I had all these loaded up on my computer. Uh, my father was a pilot in the RAF in the Second World War and fought all through the Battle of Britain. And I've got this one particular photograph of him in his um, RAF uniform. And, and I just had been mentioning this to Andrew and we'd been talking about details of the Blitz in London and stuff. Uh, it was a couple of days before they, they started shooting and um, the, the prop mistress came by and she said, can I, uh, can I get a printout of um, of the picture of your dad, and um, that was the, the 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 prop. That was the that photograph of my father 
is the photograph that Edwin runs into the house to to, um, to salvage, you know, in the opening bombing sequence. It's just just amazing, really. You know. But then when we actually came to shoot the scene where the two boys are in the, in the, the, the air raid shelter, and um, I can just remember hearing on the dailies, he's trying to, you know, G them up into the emotion of the story and he's just saying to Edmund, just imagine, imagine that's the only photograph you've ever had of your father. Just what would that feel like, you know? And, and I think, you know, there's quite a bit of that in, in, in Skander's performance there, this, this just devastated little boy who's just, just trying to get his photograph. I think my greatest satisfaction on the film was just the fact that you can sit back and forget that the, the actors are kids and that at some point in the first act of the movie you're just get completely absorbed in the story and you're completely absorbed in the characters. You don't for a moment question that the, uh, the, the CG characters are CG characters. I ain't gonna smell it if that's what you want. When I sit and watch this movie, there's a point at which I'm just going, how did I get here? You know, I, 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 I can barely remember the journey and I, I can barely comprehend where I'm going. It's just so amazing.